In this video, I will introduce how to create 3D floor plan in Home Assistant using Zircon 3D add-on. You can check my other video for the add-on installation steps. Once the add-on is installed, you can start by creating a new project. I'll name this one test for the demo. You'll see the floor created by default with one room. Now let's open the designer. You can edit it directly or open it in a new tab. You can use the plus button on the top bar to add more buildings and floors. You'll see different room shapes in the building parts panel to help you build your layout. You can use the location helper to adjust the position and size of each room. Next, let's create an opening in the kitchen wall. Just drag the wall opening model and drop it onto the target wall, then adjust its size. Now let's add some furniture objects from the models tab. You can use the object position helper to move, rotate and lift it up. Then we add doors and windows just attach them to the walls. When you're done, click the Save button to save the floor. Next, let's place some sensors onto the floor plan. In the Monitoring tab, you'll see all your devices and entities from Home Assistant. Let's put some temperature sensors into each room. You'll notice the heat map is automatically generated. Switch to Preview Layers, and you'll see the Live Preview. You can check sensor values in the data panel and also see the heat map directly on the floor. Next, let's mount a switch or a lamp onto the floor plan. The lamp is already placed. Just select it and drag the light switch entity into the data link panel to link them. You can customize the icon and choose the card type used in the preview. After saving and switching to preview mode, you can toggle the lamp directly from the bubble on the 3D floor plan. Now let's create a custom heat map layer. Zircon 3D allows you to create your own heat maps using any value-based entities such as CO, soil moisture, power usage, Wi-Fi signal strength, and more. In this demo, I'll create a heat map layer for the battery level of my temperature sensors. Set the color pattern to red, green, blue because I want full battery to appear blue and low battery to appear red. You can adjust the thresholds as needed. Then we add rules to match the battery entities. It matches entities by name by default. If it doesn't find the right ones, just adjust the rule in the settings. You'll now see the battery option in the heat map dropdown. There's no value yet because mapping happens the moment you drop the sensor onto the floor. So we can either remount your sensors, so the battery heat map will be generated automatically. Or, manually assign the heat map layer for sensors already on the floor. Select the sensor, go to data layers, choose the battery layer, and select the entity. You can also show the battery value in the sensors pop-up panel. Repeat this for all five sensors. For convenience, we recommend placing one or two sensors first, creating your custom heat map, then checking the result, and only then mounting the remaining sensors so all heat maps generate automatically. Now you can see the full battery heat map. One of my sensors is round 66%, shown in green, while the others are blue, above roughly 80%. This makes it very easy to spot weak points in your data. Humans read colors much faster than numbers.
Next, we'll create a daily use view. You can access it in Zircon 3D or embed it in your Home Assistant dashboard. Let's create a view profiles, one for temperature and one for battery. In each view, you can choose the heat map layer, styling, and other display options. Then go back to the project panel. You'll see the two views listed there, and you can click them to preview. By clicking the open button, the view opens in a new tab, and the view profile URL is provided for embedding in Home Assistant. Adjust the view and display settings, and once you're happy with it, copy the URL from the browser. Then open your Home Assistant dashboard, add a webpage card, and paste the URL. Resize the card to fit your dashboard layout. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can check our documentations, videos, or ask in our forum.